Hello everyone. This is time for class. Uh, this is the ECE 451 Control Engineering. Uh, last time uh, we have studied this, the method how to uh, write a system use differential equations. Uh, today we will consider how to solve the system. That means when you have input to the system, how to find that output. We will use the Laplace transform actually. Basically, almost all the system here uh, we can solve to find the output based on the Laplace transform. Uh, let's ECE 451, the second class. So we start from the Laplace transform. Laplace transform. Laplace transform. Actually, you should already know that, right? So this is a kind of review. Uh, the definition of the transform we suppose we have a system uh, we have a signal f of t by Laplace transform we will have a function capital F in s which is uh, this one integration from 0 to infinity is uh, f of t the signal itself then times exponential power e to the negative st and dt. Right. So this is definition. Uh, when you have a signal, you can find the Laplace transform just based on this formula, then you can have it. But uh, in most cases, we can just use tables. We have tables. We have tables. You can use a table. Uh, most common use the signals. You can find the Laplace transform based on the table. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, I put it here. Oh, this one. Okay. So this is one of the table, Laplace transform table. Uh, I already posted it in the in the black box, so you can find it. You go to the material, then you can see it. <coughs> yeah, I, I turn off the internet. The they will slow down my computer. Okay, so here um, we have two columns. One column is the function time function, so function time domain, f of t, f of t. The other side is the uh, Laplace transform, right? We have here we have two columns. Here's another two columns. Uh, most common use signals like the dirt of t, the unit in parts unit step function us of t a ramp t or polynomial the t to the n then the exponential power t times exponential power uh, like here you have sine and the cosine right so most common use the signal you can find the Laplace transform based on this table and the second table this is a Yeah, this is second table. It's a uh, zeros of Laplace transform. Uh, yeah, I copied it from another textbook. Yeah, uh, actually, you can you can have the uh, tables all over the internet, everywhere, right? Yeah, doesn't matter. So we can just use this one. I think this one will be enough. Uh, so here are zeros of the Laplace transform, right? The first two, they are the linear, linear feature of the Laplace transform. When you multiply constant, or you do summation or subtraction of signals, then in the S domain, you have same thing. Here is also times k, right? This times k, this times k. Here is plus minus. This is also plus minus. So this is a linear feature of Laplace transform. So we we know this is a linear transform. And the second one, this is very important to solve differential equations. The differential equation, we need a derivative, right? 
the derivative by Laplace transform will change to be a algebraic calculate, right? It's S times capital F minus a uh, constant, the initial value. So this side is a uh, uh, no derivative. This side is just an algebra calculation. So by this way, we can change the differential equation into a algebraic equation. Then we can solve it. So this is a basic the formula we need to use to solve the system. And we have more uh, integration, shift in the time, and uh, the initial value zero, final value zero, and the complex shift and the real convolution. Yeah, this one is also uh, in this course. Let me see. Yeah, we still need it. So the in the S domain is multiplication according to time domain is convolution. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So by the information all in these two tables, we can find almost all the uh, Laplace transform when we want. Okay. Uh, so for this one, let me see. Yeah, I won't go over it very, very all the details because suppose you already know them, right? Uh, now we consider how to solve system. How to solve system by solve system. Use Laplace transform. <coughs> uh, we start from here. The system we suppose we have a system we have a uh, to the k and here is y of uh, I start from high orders n minus k and the k run from zero to n equal to this side is uh, a b k and the uh, input is r m minus k oh not n it's m different other yeah they have different other maybe same but in most cases are different here's k run from 0 to m suppose this is system this is system then we have we perform Laplace transform we will have summation a k k run from 0 to n okay this one a to the m minus k, right? This is a derivative, and we just talk about that feature, right? Uh, this one, right? This one. We have this. We just uh, plugging this part in the derivative part, right? Is here. So a to the m minus k. That means s to the n minus k times y of s. Then minus, uh, well, I can't remember, I need to check. So next will be a power of s times the initial value s of 0. So it is s and minus k minus 1 now, right? And the initial value is y of 0. And the next, another s is m minus k minus 2. Right? This is no minus, this is minus 1, the minus 2. And the y the prime of zero. And until the last one, last one, there's no s. You can think, consider this is a s to zero. Here's s to zero, it is just one. And then we have our y. This will be n minus k minus one's derivative value at zero. Now we can write in this way. <coughs> okay. So uh each term y to the some derivative now it looks like this no derivative right this algebraically and the other side is b okay this part i can just copy them and then the r r take derivative i have s to the m minus k times r of s and do we have more no that's it this part just zeros just zeros for initial value uh, for input for input 
signal, we can always consider the initial value of the input is zero. Input initial uh, initial values always equal to zero. Um, that means before the initial time, uh, no value, right? You give input, then the system start work. So we suppose the input in the beginning it is nothing, right? In the time zero, it's nothing. Then you give input, and the system starts wrong. So its initial value is just zero, just zero. Okay, so we have equation looks like this. This is algebraic equation, algebraic equation. Okay, then we can solve. We have y of s equal to some some something. That depends, right? When you know the all the coefficients, the power, the power of them, then you can solve it, right? You can solve it. And r is given. Suppose r is given. It's the input is given by you. Then you can have y of t equal to some some something by inverse Laplace transform. Inverse Laplace transform. So to solve the system, it is just uh, uh, looks like this way. Looks like this way. All right. And here we have a special case. If the initial value on y, they are also zeros then this equation will tend to be simple, right? We remove all these parts, we remove all these parts, they are zeros. Okay, then we have that one. Special case. Y of t has zero initial. Then we have the equation that is a summation s to the n minus k and the y of s oh, and the coefficient, I forgot the coefficient, they are put here. It's a k uh, a or b. And you look at it. Ah, let me write it again. The summation of a run from 0 to n, a to the a k, then y, uh, capital Y of s times uh, s to the n minus k, yeah, this part, right, this part, and no, no values here, they are, they are zero, then equal to, here's the r s, so this is summation b k, S to the m minus k r s and k this is k wrong from zero to m. Okay, we have this one. We have this one. Then we can have y of s equal to here's summation b k s to the m minus k and here's summation a k s to the n minus k. The denominator k run from 0 to n, and numerator k run from 0 to m, uh, locus m, and here's r of s. Do we have this one? All right, this is a very good equation. Actually, you look at this part. This part we call it transfer function. It is only determined by the system itself. Uh, look at here. Okay. We have the system. We have the system. This is system equation, right? System equation, a differential equation. And uh, this is a transfer function. You look at it. what is the numerator? It is just this part, right? The BK, BK. And this is r to the n minus k derivative. This is derivative. Now it's s to the n minus k. So you replace this function. This is a function, right? Now replaced by s. Derivative, just the power of s. Okay, this is numerator. And denominator, a k is here. Here's a k. 
and then to y to the n minus k, not to the n, this is a derivative, right? n to k is order derivative. And here is a s to the n minus k. So they are totally, uh, you know, one to one, they are corresponding. Yeah. So when you have this equation, you can write this transfer function directly. Yeah, you can also uh, perform all these. Uh, perform Laplace transform, do some simplify, then get the uh, transfer function, right? You can also write this transfer function, transfer function directly, it looks like this. And uh, usually we use a, a notation like a G of S to denote it. Uh, you can also write like a, a capital F of S or capital H of S. Yeah, some transfer function, right? Or some T of S. That's yeah, you can choose, but usually we like you this one, G of S. And then this one we can rewrite it, uh, Y of S equal to G of S times R of S. So we have this one. Uh, sometimes people also want to look like in this way. Same thing, yeah, the same thing, right? They are same thing. But uh, when you when you want to apply them, this is a little bit different. In the first one, suppose g is given, r is given, you can have y. And the second one is, if you know what is y, you know what is r, you can find g. So the things in this case, the things like you have a system. Uh, the system is uh, built inside some some box. So you cannot open the box then how to know you want to know what is the system you want to know the transfer function of the system then you can give uh, input r you measure output so you know what is input what is output then go to s domain you can find the transfer function of the system right yeah and this one is suppose you know the system you know the transfer function of the system when input is given you can have y yeah, ma in math mathematically they are same thing, but uh, you know in the engineer you can say these two, according to different uh, different problem and different way to solve it, right? Okay, so this is a transfer function. This is a transfer function, and uh, then we can have some special case, still special case. Uh, this time we consider input. If input is is one uh, or in s domain is one that means in time domain rt is delta of t if if in this case we use this one as input then we have output is just uh, you know y of t is just the uh, uh, inverse Laplace transform of g of s and in other words, y of s is just the g of s. Because r is 1. r is 1. Right? r is 1. Capital r is 1. So capital y is just a g. So we have this one. The, uh, the transfer function, you do the inverse Laplace transform, you can have, uh, we call this the impulse response. Impulse response. Impulse response equal to inverse Laplace transform of the transfer function. Uh, yeah. It's a transfer function. You do the inverse Laplace transform of transfer function, then you have impulse response. You can also say the Laplace transform of impulse response equal to transfer function. Right. So we have this. We have this. This is for the, uh, the transfer function. Now let's look at an example.
consider a system uh, like y two prime the second order derivative plus five of y one prime plus six of y equal to r prime plus r all right so this is a, a second order system second order system and we suppose r of t is uh, e to the negative 2t and the uh, initial value for simplify we just consider the case y 0 and y prime of 0 equal to 0 this is 0 initial uh, the number here I need two initial numbers because he is second order for for system with order n you need n initial value right okay <coughs> now how to solve it we, we, you can perform Laplace transform so you have s square y of s minus s times y of 0 minus y prime of 0 this is the first term right then plus phi of s y of s this is s yeah. and minus y of 0 plus 6 of y of s equal to that side is just s times r of s you do not need to put the initial value of the input and r of s you can write this way now uh, you can also write the based on the transfer function directly uh, you can have these y of s equal to is numerator s plus 1 times r of s and denominator s square 5s and 6 s square plus 5s plus 6 and these all these tend to be 0 right tend to be 0 so we have this one now rs what is rs rs it is 1 over s plus 2 yeah you can find this from the table from the table and if you're familiar with the Laplace transform then you know okay e to the negative 2t according to 1 over s plus 2 this is the <coughs> most common used one right? okay so we have y of s equal to you put this in uh, this one can be written as s plus 2 times s plus 3 and we have another s plus 2 numerators okay so we have a result in s domain the output in s domain is s squared uh, s plus 2 square and s plus 3 right? these two are same I put them together <coughs> okay now we want to find inverse Laplace transform we can have the output right we can have the output we want to know what is this what is this okay check the table check the table so first of all we will see can we find it from the table directly so numerator is two factor a second factor will be a square this is not this is not okay we have this one but uh, the first factor is s not s plus 3 I want this is s plus 3 right and we have it and okay I will say no so okay uh, this one no right so we cannot use the table directly we cannot use the table directly now how to do it remember okay we use a partial fraction method we suppose we don't know what it is exactly we don't know but we know it can be written as summation of some simple factors we write it suppose this one equal to oh uh, no this is in time domain sorry let's do this this is a method to partial fraction method we suppose this s plus 1 over s plus 2 square s plus 3 
equal to I write this as a summation of some simple factors in the denominator I have s plus 2 I have s plus 2 square uh, this is b and I have s plus 3 so we write it suppose we can write the, the fraction in this way so the partial fraction each one you see this three. Oh, sorry I I need a here uh, it's my fault <coughs> okay uh, yeah we we check the table we can find this directly from the table so we need to solve it by partial fraction method we write this this one as a summation of some some small pieces each piece is a fraction with a somehow simple simple denominator numerator is constant we need to determine this constant and the denominator is a simple factor this simple factor depending on the original one what is the derivative here this derivative I have two factors s plus 2 and s plus 3 s plus 2 has a square then the other side we also have two factors s plus 2 and s plus 3 and for the square term I need s plus 2 and s plus 2 square as a denominator all right so we have uh, we can write this fraction in this way then we try to determine a b and c then we get it of course we need a condition we need a condition the degree the order of the numerator should be smaller than the degree the other of the numerator, uh, denominator this fraction for this fraction we, we need this this is a, a requirement 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 you cannot you cannot always perform the uh, partial fraction method you you have to satisfy this one if you do not have this condition you need to make some change before you play it you need to uh, remove something from the numerator from the fraction you go to outside then you do it okay. so but uh, in most cases we just consider this case suppose this is a primer primer fraction uh, primer fraction uh, primer fraction <coughs> okay well, suppose we have this then how to solve it uh, there are different ways I can just use this way uh, actually I like this way I times the, the denominator s plus 2 square s plus 3 on both sides uh, on both sides then the left side the denominator cancel right you just time the denominator on it so only numerator and equal to okay first term a over s plus 2 times this one so we have a s plus 2 and s plus 3 right we cancel one of these s plus 2 this one cancel the one this cancel the one all right and the b now s plus 2 square cancel so we only have s plus 3 and c s plus 3 cancel okay. s plus 3 was cancel so i have s plus 2 square all right then this one we will have this one for any s so we can pick any s on it like let s equal to negative 3 okay negative 3 uh, or negative 2 doesn't matter okay negative 3 I can make some of them the 0 right negative 3 0 negative 3 0 so these two will tend to be 0 and this side is negative 3 plus 1 so this is negative 2 equal to 
a times 0 plus b times 0, right? We have s plus 3 there. And plus c times negative 3. Negative 3 plus 2 and square, so this is 1. Okay, we got c. c is negative 2. c is negative. And similar, I use negative 2. I use negative 2 now. That s equal to negative 2, then here is a negative 1 equal to, okay, this a is also times 0 because s plus 2. And b times, now is 1, right? s is negative 2. And c is 0. So we have b equal to negative 1. All right. And then we want to find a. So we can choose a different s, whatever. I use that s equal to, for example, negative 1. Yeah, this, this makes things simple. This is 0, right? And this side, negative 1. So it's a times the negative 1 plus 2 and the negative 1 plus 3. And b times negative 1 times 3. And c, this is a negative 1 times a negative 1 plus 2 with a square. Okay, times this. So we have 0 equal to 2a plus 2b plus c. And we already have b is negative 1. This is a negative 2 so this is 2a minus 2 minus 2 is 2a minus 4 okay 0 equal to 2a minus 4 so a must be 2 right uh, a minus a must be 2 okay we get a b c we get a b c now please look at here we know what is a what is b what is c right actually this is a y of s this is y of s. Okay. y of s is this one. And this one, by partial fraction, we get this. And coefficients a, b, c are here. a, b, c. Right? So, by inverse Lovelace transform, we can have y of t equal to a a is 2 a is 2 and this one go to time domain it is e to the negative 2t right and the second one is b b is a negative 2 a negative 1 so minus and this is square you need to check the table it will be t times e to the negative 2t you can find it from table uh yeah table here This one, you see, 1 over s plus alpha square is a t times e to the negative alpha t. Right? So we have this. We have this. Yeah, the second term. And last term is c over s plus 3, and c is negative 2. So here's an e to the negative 3t. Alright, wrap up. And for more accurate, you would like to put this one. T should be positive. Yeah. For negative side, um, usually people think that's zero, right? So we consider for the positive side. So we have the final answer is this one. All right. So this is an example to solve the system by Lovelace transform. Yeah. Uh, you perform Lovelace transform, then. So an algebraic equation, then inverse Laplace transform. Okay, finally you have the answer. All right. And here we have some numbers are very special. What numbers? These two negative two and negative three. When s equal to negative two, you see here, denominator is zero. For s equal to negative 3, denominator is also 0. 
so they have names we call them poles of the uh, depending on uh, the system right so they are poles they are poles we call them they are poles and uh, we have transfer function this is transfer function this is transfer function this is transfer function right transfer function in this transfer function has a pole has a pole negative 2 negative 3 and when s equal to negative 2 and negative 3 the uh, the transfer function tend to be infinite right something over 0 and when you solve the system you see you need these s minus a pole this is a s minus a pole and this is also right this is also you have s minus a pole pole is negative 2 or negative 3 and here the square that depends on the problem right here you have square but you always have the form s minus a pole s minus a pole when you do partial fraction and then in the final answer you also have this is a e to the pole times t yeah. pole is negative 2 or negative 3 so when you know the poles when you know the poles of the transfer function you can say in the upper side you will have some exponential power with those poles times t you will have terms look like this so the poles are very important right they give you the feature of the uh, the waveform of the output right. uh, okay let me write down here the uh, system ways central function g of s will have e to the pt as part of its response its output where p uh, more than one usually you have more so i say p's they are poles of g of s do we have this one so you have a pole then you have this part in the upper upper all right uh, we can use computer to have a look let me go to the my lab yeah. my lab my lab is a very old version it's a six dollar one but I did like it because this one run you know it will not use so many resources of computer the new newest version newest version of my lab it runs uh, every time when i started it will cost a lot of time uh, as we, we did in the classroom remember that is the newest one okay now we consider the uh we want have a system we start from a simple one like uh, i use s equal to tf okay by this way we define the s we define the s we can use this s as a you know that's a variable in the transfer function okay now we can let g equal to for example 1 over s plus 2 uh, 1 over 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 you see we have a transfer function this is this system is g it's transfer function is 1 over s plus 2 and then what what will be the we can check the impulse response like impulse response and you figure equal one impulse response impulse of this g uh, wait a moment 
okay so this is the impulse response of this system actually what is the impulse response impulse response it is just the, the Laplace inverse transform of the transfer function so 1 over s plus 2 to inverse Laplace transform we get this impulse response impulse response now you see it is just exponential power right exponential power uh, with power neck 2t so it looks like this and uh, we can have another like I use different g yes I use minus now transfer function is 1 over s minus 2 and uh, still use, uh, use figure 2 is this one uh, let me see both you see yeah we have both this is second one second one the value is coming up and the transfer function the first one the first one is the can I see both yeah first one transfer function is here s plus 2 s plus 2 and the signal looks like this the pole is negative 2 pole is negative 2 here's a e to the negative 2 t right the value is going down to be tend to be zero and the second one the transfer function is 1 over s minus 2 the pole is 2 right when s is 2 this is infinity so the pole for this transfer function is positive 2 and its response in part response to go to infinity because it's e to the 2t right e to the 2t okay so this is for first order system and uh, you can see if just 1 over s what will happen right so now g equal to 1 over s and uh, figure figure 1 okay let's see what it is oh you can see yeah it's here actually it's 1 it's always 1 always 1 uh, it's not going up not going down it's just in the middle keep 1 constant this is a unit step function right unit step function yeah okay so this is uh, for first order system you can also consider the second order system like now g equal to i use one over one over not s i use s square s square plus four s four times s plus a constant like one okay so this is a uh, system G looks like this then we want to know the impulse response I put in figure one impulse response uh, look like this it's going up similar with the input right input is a unit in part so the input is just coming up to infinity and then going back to be zero right the impulse now this one is also kind of impulse but uh, uh, you can think this is a kind of a time delay with it right the system needs some time to respond to the input so when you have a impulse response the output is also a parse coming up to a certain value then go back and uh, finally tend to be zero right actually this this should be a combine of two uh two exponential powers you can think this one you can write it as a factor uh yeah we have another one we have another function we call pz map pz map of g we can see the uh, i use figure two for this one figure two okay uh this is a pole zero map pz pz2 pz map pz map this function of my lab give us a map of pole and zeros uh, pole here we have pole that means the roots of the denominator right well s equal to these two numbers the numerator uh, the denominator is zero right so this is a pole and this is another pole 
uh, people like to use a cross here or you think it's an X here to represent we have a pole here and if we have zero there will be uh, some cross uh, some circles let me let me yeah I can use a different G not G is this one right numerator just one so no zero I put S plus one okay so this one give us uh, zero when s equal to negative one the central function is zero so we can also see what is the pz map it's a pz map you see we have circle here we have circle here so negative one is a zero right yeah so now the system has one zero and two poles and also we can see the response the impulse response yes this is impulse response uh, yeah it still looks like this it's coming up make it large yeah it should be coming up very sharply and then going down and finally tend to be zero this is usually form waveform of uh, impulse response is coming up and finally go back to be zero yeah and we have another kind of output that is a step response that is three is a three step s p e p step response step response is the uh, the output when input is a unit step unit step this one so when input is a unit step so input will jump up from 0 to 1 at time 0 and then keep 1 forever right that's the input side then the system will give a response give a output is also a jump up but not so rapidly it will jump it should grow up gradually and finally reach some value here so this is a step response step response Oh, this one just the same with the input go to one that depending on the system like if I change G to be uh, this is a s plus one s plus two if I here I put a put a two here all right the system different right and we can see also see the PZ map the PZ map yes yeah, there are two poles one zero right and uh, then uh, step response you see it's step response it also looks like this but uh, it will not jump to one it jump to point five uh, point five only half only half input side the input signal will jump from zero to one and output will jump from zero to half and also not really jump directly it is a uh, grow 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 like a gradually go to part right so this is a step response all right and we also uh, we also consider the response when input is a sinusoid sinusoid you know, sine or cosine that is also a common user signal and we can use my lab to to see how it looks like uh, we can we can work like this we use a t run from zero to point to point uh, like four and uh, I gave 20 20 since the second okay now I have time period time duration and I design the sign signal as an input is R of T which is sign of uh, this T I give a frequency frequency like a pi over uh, over three times that t okay this is a signal with pi over 3 as input uh, as a frequency the sense sine right sine wave so I have a r I have a r if you want you can see but r t and r how they look like oh I forgot which which graph is it one two uh, this one Right, this is sine wave sine wave now let's use r as input we want to find output y 
I use the, uh, we use the function error uh, is error simulate error means a linear linear system right sim like a simulation simulate and the system is g and the input is r time duration is t we use this then the output we're putting y or we put in y okay and we can plot a uh, use figure 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 2 and the plot times t and output is y okay so this one works right what well, well okay so this is a output now you can compare with the input this is input uh, no figure 2 is the output figure uh, which one? Figure two is output. Figure three, yeah. Figure three is the input. Right? This is input. Input is standard sign. Start from zero, go to one, then go back to negative one, then positive one. Right? The amplitude is one. And the output side, it looks also very similar with the sign. Start from zero, but uh, not go to one is go to some value close to point four, then go back, and then go up, up and down, up and down. It also looks like sign, but not exactly same. And here you see the amplitude at least is not one. It's somehow some value lower than one, right? So amplitude will change. And also we have some changes here. You see the first peak. If you think it's a sign, this amplitude is higher here. Then the amplitude change it to be smaller and keep the same amplitude so this is really what happened for uh, for a sinusoid input uh, in the first few seconds of small period the signal is not so exactly as a, as a sine wave or cosine wave and uh, after a while it will turn to be a sine tend to be a sine yeah so this is uh, what happened for uh, sinusoid input right then we use sine we can also use cosine if we use r equal to this is a sine right if i use a cosine we can do similar thing and uh, we still need a y actually this command can give us the graph directly if i do not put y equal to then this function will return its result in a graph if I put Y, it will give the, the, all the data, they put all the data inside Y. If I just write in this way, they will give a graph. The system will give a graph to us. That will be figure, uh, which figure? Oh, I don't know which one is going to. We have three ones. I, I give a figure here. Figure, figure one. All right. Figure one. Okay, this this time the input is a cosine. It looks like this. Input is a cosine. Okay, some small value, then large, large until okay. Now the amplitude tend to be similar. Tend to be similar. Always the value. Yeah. So this is a. Um, you can compare with the step response. Uh, this is. A, uh, I don't have step response. Okay. I use a figure figure two for step response. Yeah, you can compare these two. You compare these two for sinusoid input. Uh, you need some time, and finally go to a sine or cosine, right? and uh, for the step response you need some time and finally it will keep to be a constant right so both cases the output finally it will reach certain state the similar way the input now we have name for that part is steady state steady state and uh, in the beginning uh, this part we call this a transi uh, transient response 
and then steady state right all right yeah we will study that part later okay this is a system like this one right have this one and we have zero and the poles two poles one zero now let's consider g equal to i make some change like here i use a four here what i have so we only have one actually we have two poles but they are same value right uh, pg map uh, let me let me close all the uh, not going on. Turn, turn out this figure turn out these turn out these turn out these yeah I clean I, I close all of them and do it again now I have G this one right this is G see? we're not seeing something anyway nothing okay ah, now it's good we have this as G then what is the PZ map uh, to the map of G so we have one zero and negative one the numerator is s plus one and we have a pole at two actually this is a you know this ne the negative two we have double poles at same point okay. this is s plus two square in the denominator okay. and we can see what is the response we have the impulse response impulse of uh, G impulse of G now uh, it's a uh, from one then going down to negative side and then coming back finally go to zero this is the impulse response and the step response It's going up, go over, go over, then coming back, and finally come back to point two five, right? And uh, if we use a sign, I I use a y equals very similar. I still have this, right? As R and T are same. Yeah, similar. Start from zero and finally go to a sine sign right okay all right it's nice now we we consider more we use g equal to now this is not five uh, not four i use a four plus anyway i just 14 four plus ten this time the poles will be complex number complex number you can see pg map You see, pole is here. One pole is here. Negative two plus three dot one six i. And another pole is here. Symmetrically. So we have two complex poles. Complex poles. Then for this case, what will be the response? We can see the impulse response. First one, impulse response. Ah, similar, right? It's a positive then going down to negative side and then coming up and down like this okay, so this is an impulse response uh, for the case we already have real signal a uh, real pose this curve is just more more how to say more smooth right just going down to zero now is a kind of oscillate positive side going down to negative side then go back to positive side and then actually we can see it but it will go back to to negative and then coming up and then and then down again and up again so it will go across mm, from positive to negative to negative to positive forever of course the value will tend to be smaller so we cannot see here inside this graph but you will always work like this this is the impulse response and for step response step response yeah start from zero then come up 
do some positive value then go back lower to this is steady state right so go over then go back then go over and go back uh, just to go around the steady state the limited steady state okay. and here we have name for this part this is an overshoot overshoot right going to the top is overshoot maximal overshoot the overshoot and uh, go down and overshoot and go down here's a maximal overshoot right? this is that okay and for sinusoid this one okay uh, oh sinusoid is similar let me see yeah, sinusoid. Sinusoid, the uh, oh, this is impulse. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not sinusoid. Sorry, it's my form. I want sinusoid. Is it L simulate? Yeah, this one is sinusoid. Okay, the sinusoid. Sinusoid is also sinusoid. Uh, you also have a jump up and going down to like this way, like this way. So this is for for case with uh, uh, complex pose, complex pose. Actually, the basic feature for complex pose is it will coming up and down, you know, up and down. But uh, okay, this example is not so good. I use a smaller one. I use a complex pose. Okay, I use this G equal to. I remove this first order part so s squared plus 14 all right or with a smaller one I use a point o, o 2 times s I just give a small value on the first order part and then this one okay like this one I use this as G then the PZ map of G you can see we have two poles or oh, these two poles very close to the major axis and one zero here and what is the impulse response impulse response of G ah oh this is too much too much I give the time this, this time is go to six thousand six thousand because the response, you know, it will, it will converge to zero, but uh, it spend a lot of time. If we only look at the first few, first few seconds, I use that T. Uh, I have the T, right? I have the T. I just use that T. Ah. Yeah, it's, it is an oscillation. Up and down, up and down. The magnitude will tend to be smaller and smaller and tend to zero, but the the speed reducing speed is a uh, very slow, you know, very slow. Just uh, reduce a little bit for each cycle. So if you look at just uh, like a twenty second, you can see uh, the final feature. The only when you go to thousand, six thousand, you see. Now time is 6000 you can see oh it's going the amplitude of this kind of sign is reduced finally tend to be zero yeah so this is the case when you have a pole in the complex poles complex poles uh, the output side the response side you will have up and down like a sign so you can also see the step step of G now I give a T. If I do not have that T, okay, you can see what it is. This also will last a long time, you see. Start from zero and uh, finally go to this steady state, right? Start from zero. But it will up and down, up and down for a lot, a lot of time. Also 6,000. If you just look at the first few, first 20 seconds, it will look like this. You can see it's very hard to recognize the amplitude is reducing. Right? 
and also we can see a sinus sign if input is a sinus sign okay this input is sinus sign now what will be the output ah you see you have two so you have a sinus sign this is sinus sign right sinus sign up and down and you also have a sinus sign that is a in a large scale you got it can you measure it yeah let's go to the paper yeah. so the system is g equal to s plus one here's a s square plus point zero ah forgot zero zero two plus fourteen and the input r equal to what is r cosine pi over three times t right looks like this and the output the output output I use LSIM linear simulation of G with input R and T. It looks like this one. Okay, I can put these two together. All right. Okay. So it's a uh, zero, right? Zero up and down. So you can see like you have uh, like this and the curve is you got it things look like this things look like this so this is combined of two uh, two sinusoid two sinusoid one is coming from the input one is coming from the the impulse response the system itself so it looks like this look like this uh, if we want to see the when this scale is large okay this is 20 right if I go to 6000 can we do it yeah I use t equal to now is 6000 6000 is a large one right t and r equal to same r but the time is run from 0 to 6000 and the same length uh, air sim but now this is if we look at the graph I don't think we can find it. can we see anything too much oh looks like this look at this but actually here this part will be the sinusoid we can we can put these just in the mm, let me see how to see I use access yeah this is command and uh, I use 6000 right if we look at the last last so it's 5 9 70 to 6000 and uh, for y y still wrong from well, negative 5 to positive 5 okay from negative point 5 2.5 okay I gave a range to display this graph now I look at it. see yeah this is not whole graph we just look at uh, the access the access x side the time side is from 5970 to 6000 then you see it's a sinusoid looks like this and if we look at the first first few uh, this is 6,000, right? I use uh, like uh, uh, 1,000 1,000 to 2,000, right? 1,970 uh, 1, to 2,000 This is a, uh, you think it's kind of a window of that curve, right? This is a uh, early time Early time Oh, this is like this uh, This is still in the case we have two waves up and down up and down we have two two waves right 
two signal signs. One is a higher frequency, one is a lower frequency. So like this. Like this. Alright. Okay. So this is the case. And we can uh okay. all right. Now we consider still consider the second order if we uh, if we have things like uh, unstable, I mean, uh, if we have, yeah, here's all of the output will just go to a finite number, finite number, right? But in some case, the signal will go to infinite, as we did for the, for this one, right? G equal to 1 over S minus 2 for this one. Then the step of this G, you will see it will go to the value will go to larger and larger. Actually, will go to tend to infinite when time go to infinite, right? Yeah. And uh, for second order system, is similar. If I use g equal to this one, if I change something to be minus, okay, no, minus, that uh, is too small. I use a, I just use two, okay. Like this one. If I have this one as input uh, as a transfer function, then what is the step step response of G? Or oh, is it go to infinity? It's larger, right? Up and down, up and okay. It's very very large. If we give more T's, oh, what is T? No, it's too large. I uh, use 20, still use 20. Actually, 20 might be not your large. Then I check the step of G. Uh, give the time duration is T. Okay. okay. Oh, it's this one. You see the size? The, the Y axis, now the unit is 10 to 7. Ah, it's very large. So it will up and down, up and down. But in this scale, you can see it. In the scale 10 to 7, so for early time, the, the value change, you can see it. Until time go to like a 14 seconds, you can see it's up and down, up and down, up and down. You know, when times grow up, the, the amplitude also grow up. So when time go to infinity, this amplitude will go to infinity. Yeah, this is unstable. We call this an unstable case. Unstable case. All right. Okay. So these are the uh, uh, several response, right? Several response. Okay. Then for the sinusoid case, if we use use this t. Okay, I use a uh, L sinusoid CRT. What do I have? You must be. Oh, I didn't give R. I need to calculate R again because I change T, so R also need to change. Then this one. Yeah, similar thing. You know, the the input is a sign, but because the system itself go to infinite, so. It will go to infinity. Yeah. And uh, we can see the uh, impulse response, which will be also go to infinity. See? Yeah. Up and down, up and down. If we have more time, it will uh, give more amplitude. More amplitude. All right. Yeah. Okay. So this show us some feature of the input and output and uh, the thing is related with the pulse with the pulse the, the location of the pulse also give us the feature of the response right like uh, now we see the PZ map PZ map of G one zero here the with we are the cross Let me see. Now what is G? 
G weighs two poles, right? Second order. In on this second order should be two poles. Where are the poles? Two poles. So we can find it inside. It should be on the boundary. This boundary is zero, so it should be this side. Uh, it's here. Uh -huh. One pole is here. Is one plus three point six one I, and the other one should be. Oh, I can't find. It's covered by this one. This is my uh, document camera. Yeah, should be here. Should be two poles. Two poles. Yeah, two poles. All right. And uh, now we go to. Let me see. I have some time. Oh, it's it's the time. Okay, then. Uh, they're almost done today here. I just want to illustrate one thing. I want to explain one thing for the homework. Uh, I post some homework in the black box. So you go to black box, you go to the assignment and the uh, exam, there's a folder. You go into that folder, you can see homework one, assignment homework one. Mm, this homework, you do not need to submit. You just do by yourself and I will give you solution later. And then the in the Wednesday of second uh, week, that should be next week. Uh, actually, not next week of today. And uh, anyway, so the third week, uh, second week Wednesday, we'll have an exam. Mm, this exam is a kind of a review exam. Uh, we'll give some problem mm, similar with the homeworks, and uh, you will try to do it, and then you can see. Mm, whether you are good in the basic knowledge, right? Before you come to here, you should know. Uh, before you come to this course, you should know some basic things about the control theory, Laplace transform, system, things like that. And uh, if you find uh, you do this exam one very easy, that will be great, right? Yeah, you won't feel hard in this course. If you do the first uh, exam, you feel it's somehow hard. Then the whole course will hard will be hard for you. You have to pay a lot of time on it. Right? Pay attention to get uh, somehow enough grade or even just a pass. Yeah. And uh, we know we have two weeks as a period. You can choose the course, right? So I put this exam in the, uh, before that day. So when day we have the exam, then you should know okay whether the problem looks hard or not. And after that, I will try to grieve, and so you can see the uh, your score before Friday, before Friday night, maybe Friday. Uh, I will do it as fast as I can. All right. So you can have a kind of um, you know you can have this score as a, a reference, so you can you can make your decision. Maybe help you to make the decision, right? To take or uh, make some change. All right. Yeah. Okay, that's all for today and see you next time.